Hey guys, how's it going? Kriparian here. Today I want to give you guys my final build guide for Season 2 of Diablo 4. And it is my favorite build. It is such a joy to play this build. It is a firewall build, but it is a build that I rolled and it's really enabled from some of the new uniques they added in Season 2. Now, while these uniques are not specifically Durial drops, are exclusively Durial drops, um, Durial does drop them with a pretty high level of frequency and in general outside of Duriel dropping them they're actually pretty rare I haven't found too many of the uniques that Duriel can drop outside of killing Duriel the boss so these aren't exactly starter builds that you would want to follow to the T while it is a firewall build if you want to just start out a firewall build well there is Crips ultimate firewall guide for that so what makes this different? Well, it really just started with this ring, X-Fall's Corroded Signet. So this ring, not only does it have superb stats, it has Lucky Hit Cooldown Reduction, which is arguably the strongest stat in Diablo, and you can't get the stat on a ring other than this ring. Lucky hit, your damage over time effects have up to 50% chance to erupt, dealing 5 to 6 damage. Now, 5 to 6 damage is a damage that they use in their calculation that's multiplied by the item power of the item. At maximum item power, 925, which if dropped off Duriel, it will always be 925. It has a maximum range over 40,000. So it's actually the highest single instance of damage on an item in the game. The thing is, there's a lot of complicated mechanics that go into this, and lucky hit off damage over time effects is generally quite poor. If you want to scale this ring, it might be best on like a bleed barb, maybe, but I'll explain the maybe in a second, because these are not too outlined. Other than this ring, it really helps to get to Bolt's Will, which are new pants. Same as the ring, they don't have to drop off Duriel, but Duriel can drop it, so it's really rare. I think I found one outside of Duriel playing for a week, for example. So, you know, you might have to find it off Duriel, which gives you uh, 50 resource when you become unstoppable. And this build is also pretty reliant on the vampiric powers, namely Vulnerable. You only get vulnerable from your vampiric power, and this vulnerable is actually a multiplier to all of your damage. I also put in Soul Brand in the build. Um, it is the least mandatory item, uh, other than you know the ones I mentioned, but it's nice to have. I actually don't have this in the game. Duriel hasn't dropped it. It is a Duriel drop. It drops inside of Duriel. It is what it is. Esu's boots are incredibly common. Their ability converts your movement speed over 130% of that becomes critical strike chance. And a lot of the bosses have this on their drop table. I have received maybe a dozen of these boots from those bosses and like a couple outside of the bosses. So super common boots, you will get one that has uh, pretty good rolls, I imagine. Oculus is from the Beast in Ice. Uh, and again, can drop otherwise. I actually got one otherwise and like four from Beast and Ice. Beast and Ice really often drops it over a 900 item level, so it's very good. You get the effect of teleport enchantment for free when you use Evade and you go to a random location, so it's kind of upside downside. It also has a ton of maximum Evade charges and a ton of ranks to teleport. However, because Metamorphosis overwrites your evade, you don't teleport in a random location. You actually don't teleport at all. Your dodge becomes Metamorphosis. This overwrites the effect of the item, but the item, it gives you all these bonuses to your teleport, aka dodge, but it also nerfs it by putting it in a random location. Well, the nerf is undone with Metamorphosis. Again, it's not teleport, so you lose some of the upsides too, but the net of these two abilities is unbelievably good. Uh, we generally are stacking Lucky Hit to a point where I'm putting Aspect of Fortune, Lucky Hit Chance, 10 to 20% while you have a barrier active on the Amulet. This is not even a damage aspect. 10 Lucky Hit is really, really big. Okay. If you want the full details for this build, make sure to check out the written guide on Mobilytics. That'll be in the description below, as well as all Crypt builds, of course. The details are pretty important. Lucky Hit is hard to come by, and you want all of it. Lucky Hit with Barrier works very well on Sork, so you get that there. Lucky Hit with Barrier on the Helmet. Lucky Hit uh, with Barrier and regular Lucky Hit on your offhand. 
on your ring. And the only real reason we use Soul Brand is because it has Lucky Hit with Barrier on the unique item, and this is not a stat that can normally show up on a chest piece. The alternate weapon is a uh, flame, uh, flame scar, I think it's called. It's the item that gives you ranks to incinerate. And that one has Lucky Hit with fire skills. So why is Lucky Hit so good? Well, when I first made this character, and I did level it to 100, so I know a lot about it. You can trust what I'm telling you. Um, I thought that the damage of the Corroded Signet would be the large bulk of my damage. Okay, so you need Lucky Hit because Lucky Hit would then be at least linear to scaling the damage of the proc. After playing the character and really min-maxing it, this is a highly optimized character, and I'm going to show you guys a few tips that I learned from the new Paragon systems and skills. Um, actually, Firewall does a lot of damage. Even though I have almost nothing that only works on Firewall, Almost everything this character does is like generic damage, elemental damage, and burning, damage to burning. So it's very unconditional damage. This character is the only Sork I have ever seen that has no crowd control. The Sork is built around card control. This character doesn't do that. That experience of putting down a firewall and running away and the mobs run through it and die to the fire that's what we're maximizing, okay? The best crowd control is being two screens away from the mobs that you're killing, in my opinion. So, lucky hit chance. It's really good, it scales the proc, but the proc isn't all your damage. The thing is, another thing that just changed with Firewall, if you have it in your enchantment slot, it's 25% lucky hit to summon two Firewalls in an X pattern. So it used to be 5% chance when you deal uh, damage over time with fire, but now it's lucky hit based. So the lucky hit that you get, it scales how often you get the free firewall procs, and it scales how you get the signet. But the free firewall procs can proc the signet. So something like 10% lucky hit, it's worth like 15 to 17% damage. Think about that. Lucky hit is scaling your damage more than its value as a multiplier. So it's a super cool build. All the Lucky Hit stuff is really interesting to kind of get to get together. And if you're curious, um, I was clearing Nightmare Dungeon 100 on this build like it was in Nightmare Dungeon 50, okay? This build is pretty ridiculously strong. It's not going to one-shot the bosses, but the sustained DPS of this build is about two and a half million or so, maybe three if you really optimize it. Uh, we're using ice armor. Uh, we actually have to use ice armor because the potent warding that gives you all resist and a max resist based on the element of a skill, we basically have to use a cold skill. Uh, so ice armor is a cold skill. Get three max cold resist, that's pretty good. Teleport, lightning skill, pretty good. These are both instant, very, very good. We use Firebolt. Firebolt was recently buffed. Firebolt grants burning damage, 25% multiplier for three seconds when you hit something. You don't have to crit something. Even though this is a crit character, we don't have to crit. We just do that like once we're, once we're about out of mana. The way it works with Tobolt's will, um, if you are already unstoppable, you don't get the bonus. So the way that it works, because your evade is metamorphosis, it gives you unstoppable for four seconds. What you do is teleport and then evade. Teleport gives you unstoppable only for the teleport. So if you do teleport, then evade, you get 100 resource back. And that's all you need with this build. Okay, so you go like 100 resource, cast, 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 it's like you're at zero, and you're usually gonna be at zero for like a cast or two, because this build has crazy attack speed as well. So when you're at zero, you can throw a firebolt every four seconds, five seconds, however it is for your teleport cooldown. Spam firewall. Flame shield actually has a really good lucky hit. Flame shield is 35%. I'll explain how lucky hit works in a second. And inferno. Inferno is okay. For the enchantments, we're using firewall, obviously, but we're also using incinerate. Why do we use incinerate? So incinerate actually also has a pretty good lucky hit, but channeling incinerate standing still in one spot with a narrow beam is just horrible. The other thing that incinerate does, and we're going to look here at our skill tree, on the last upgrade, enemies deal 25% less damage while burning from incinerate. So incinerate does burn for a, like maybe a second, maybe two after it's done channeling. If you have the enchantment master, which we do, 
uh, I believe it's 8 seconds every 12. So this is like 9 to 10 seconds every 12 against like a single target, like a boss, 25% DR as well. And we get the lucky hit procs. Now lucky hit for damage over time is really confusing. Okay, There's a lot of skills that have a damage component and a damage over time component. The lucky hit of the skill is the combination of those two things. There's some procs that are just like lucky hit on dealing damage, and that will count your direct damage and your non-direct damage. For a skill like Incinerate, it's all damage over time, and that's really important because that's what we need to proc Firewall, and that's what we need to proc X-Fall's Corroded Signet. A skill like Firebolt, which seems like a good idea to spam, is not a good idea to spam. Firebolt has a lucky hit of 35, but that includes the direct hit and the entire duration of the damage over time. Now, I haven't exhaustively made a spreadsheet and figured it out through thousands of tests in order to tell you what it is, but I can tell you that Firebolt's lucky hit with damage over time is bad. You have to use Firebolt a lot to get procs from the Firewall and the x -Falls. but you can. You can. It's just like, my guess, it's like 25% of the 35 lucky hit is on the initial hit, and 10 is on the damage over time, which makes it a really poor damage over time lucky hit skill. You following? Okay. And there are a few other skills that you might think might be pretty good, like Meteor. Again, Meteor actually has a very high base lucky hit, but again, most of that is the hit portion of the damage. The burning damage from the Meteor can proc the effects, but it's a really low chance. I actually tried with Meteor instead of Incinerate. It was definitely worse. And you might be thinking, Hydra. 3% lucky hit, but then it burns. Every single hit has an individual burn. That's insane. Hydra, the skill, doesn't burn. And my understanding is that skills that don't have a component that is damage over time on the base of the skill, even if you give it a damage over time component afterwards, it does not gain any lucky hit. And I have tested this. The burn damage from Hydra can never proc Firewalls or the X-Fall proc. And similarly, if you use the Firebolt Enchant with a different skill, the Firebolt Enchant, which adds a burn to your skill, that burn will never proc the ring and will never proc Firewalls. So the skills we're using are very deliberate, okay? There's, there's no wiggle room to use different skills. The best skill is surprisingly Flame Shield because it's 35 lucky hit, it's per target hit, and Flame Shield hits everything around you, but it's 35 for, for two seconds. So within those two seconds, you're realizing, like, this build has like 140 lucky hit. So it's almost 100% per target you're burning. So the way you play this build is you firewall, and then you run away. They're all going to die. That one firewall is going to spawn like 15 firewalls because your lucky hit is so high and they're going to get X-Fall procs everywhere. It's the, maybe one of the fastest builds in the entirety of Diablo 4 for speed farming. Uh, you just have to backtrack to see the loot, but in many game modes, you don't really care about the loot. It's just the, a journey to get to a boss. Um, Flame Shield is just like the burst, but you're also immune when you have the burst. So there are some options here. Um, like, I don't have the Soul Brand chest, but what I use for the legendary power is the one 6% chance when you're hit to reset the cooldown of defensive skill. So what I do, because teleport's cooldown is so short, it's rarely ever on cooldown, um, it's going to reset Ice Armor or Flame Shield a lot when I'm getting hit. Uh, so I actually, I'm spamming Flame Shield in some instances. It's actually a really cool interaction. So there are a few options, but again, if you don't have the X-Fall ring specifically, it's not really worth it to scale like crit chance at least. So the build will be at least somewhat different. It won't be an optimized firewall build if you just take the X-Fall out and copy the rest. Teleport, you guys know that stuff. Uh, here, lucky hit, obviously, we get all the defensive passives. Oh, uh, one teleport is fine if you have Oculus, but if you don't have Oculus, you actually definitely want five in teleport. Um, you can take away, like, Mana Shield. Uh, I did Nightmare Dungeon 100 with no points in Mana Shield uh, and a couple, a couple of deaths per map, but, like, you know, it's not like I was trying to be careful. It's just the build just crushed it, basically. Um, some skills have Pyromancy skill damage, right? Um... Pyromancy skills does not include the proc. Okay, the proc is gonna like crit for over a million. I've had a crit for almost two million. 
playing this build, but that's not a pyromancy skill. So this is just damage or firewall, but damage or firewall is really significant. Initially, I thought I'd be going with S's ferocity, which is all of your fire damage gets higher crit and crit multi, but because firewall is like half the damage of the character, I just stuck with combustion. I think combustion is still better, even though you're going all in on the proc. But still, the proc is really significant. Devouring blaze multiplies the proc when you crit by a significant amount. Notice, no Frost Nova. We also do not use Aspect of Control. There is zero consideration for crowd control in this build, and there's a very important reason. Flowing Veins is a vampiric power that gives you 60 damage over time multiplier. If they are moving, or affected by a Vampiric Curse. You generally are applying the Vampiric Curse by dashing through them. When it comes to a boss, you just dash once, has the curse forever. I think it has like an infinite duration, by the way. But against other targets, you need to keep them moving. This is a multiplier. So this is almost like, this is 6% more damage, almost doubling your damage. So how do we keep them moving? Well, we keep them moving by not freezing them, not ice noving them, not immobilizing them, and we don't use the teleport stun because we don't want to stun them. We want them to keep moving. It's too difficult to immediately apply the Vampiric Curse. So what we do is we always keep them moving, and we're not using the ultimate cooldown reduction Vampiric Power. We're using Terror. Terror is 14% chance uh, when you're hit. So this works even if you have the invulnerability up, because they still attack you when you have invulnerability up. 14% chance to fear nearby enemies and slow them for 80%. So it's not fear or slow, it's fear and slow. They actually don't scatter very much because 80 slow is crazy high. And the second part of this power is you're guaranteed to critical strike enemies who are feared. Which means that even if you have like 10 crit, your X-Fall will always crit. So you can just scale crit damage, which will work on the proc, you don't even really have to use the booth for clearing, but they help for boss damage, because this 40% is a lot. You get hit a lot in this game, okay? You might think you won't, but you get hit a lot in this game. And they're always moving, okay? When you're, when you're playing against targets, you either vampiric curse them for the flowing veins with, with the metamorphosis dash, or they're just running behind you, just running away, they're going through the firewalls, or... You stand still and you're casting on some guys, but usually when you do that, they attack you, they get feared, they're moving again. So the uptime on flowing vans is like 99%. It's a zero CC Sork build. I'm so proud of this. Okay. Um, the rest of the build is pretty vanilla. Obviously, we have max firewall. Um, endless pyre is just for boss damage. You can take two points out of that if you want to put it in teleport. Uh, there's some flexibility here, but you always have to ask yourself, because, you know, uh, the proc is not a pyromancy skill. I want to pass on a few lessons with the Paragon board. Um, normally, I just ask you guys to check out the written guide on Mobilitics, but in this case, I want to highlight a few things that I've actually not seen any other Sork guides about, um, and it is no joke, okay? So we are using Tactician here, 10% more damage. Uh, after four seconds, we want to use a defensive skill. We use them all the time. It's always up. But this also gives us bonus to the rare nodes. And the rare nodes are non-physical damage and resists. This character gets full resist and cap just by wearing items. You don't need a single resist roll on one of your armor pieces. So your entire gear set is focused towards defense and damage. It's very good. This non-physical damage is really important, though. Because non-physical damage is plain fire damage, so it's scaling your firewall and your X-Fall hit. It's not like damage over time. It's not burning damage, okay? It's just always scaling it. It's unconditional. We have like 300% of this, by the way. But that also means that it's lightning damage for your teleport. Not a big deal. But it's also cold damage. So that cold damage... Oh, sorry. I have it backwards on mine, but it's, it's the same otherwise. You deal bonus damage to vulnerable enemies, and this is damage over time and direct damage, equal to 10% of the total bonus with your Colt up to a maximum of 30. Okay? So this is like, if, if you have enough non-physical damage, and you're using a legendary aspect, I'll show you in a second, this is actually almost capping out. I have no cold damage on my character, but I'm stacking non-physical damage because it's actually strong, it's unconditional, so we don't care if it's moving, we don't care if it's close, none of that crap, and it's also cold damage, so it's giving us an extra multiplier. And, and, um, they have, ah, oh, where is it? 
Ah, here it is. New legendary power, this patch. Gain 20 to 30, increase this the multiplier of a set damage type for seven seconds, and it flips between two sets. So for seven seconds, you get 30 more damage with fire, lightning, and physical. And then the next seven seconds, you get the damage multiplier with cold, poison, and shadow. Here's how this works. Um, so these multipliers, they don't work like a stat on a gear piece. It gives you the multiplier on damage, so you get the 30 multiplier to all of your fire damage, um, like firewall or the proc, but it also multiplies your unconditional damage of that type. So all that non-physical damage, it's giving you a little bit extra fire damage, but also when it's not triggered for fire, it's giving you 30% more of your cold damage from the non-physical stat. And you can see this in the tooltip. I, I can verify this in game for you guys. So this bonus is going up by like three or 4% when it's cycled to cold. So basically what I'm saying is if you have the cold node on the board, the aspect of it's actually really good because it's unconditional damage. You don't need a barrier. You don't have to be close. None of that crap, okay? It 30 is a lot for a Sork. Like, 20 is pretty good. Like, people still use Edge Masters on Sork. This is way better than Edge Masters because it's completely unconditional, and it's 30 when it's fire. Actually, a little bit over 30. Let's, let's say it's like 35 when it's fire. And then when it's cold, it's like 4 or 5, right? So you're always getting something. It's very, very cool. So non-physical damage is super premium. Um, I don't care for anything that only scales one thing. So... The 20 area of the firewall is kind of big, though. So we have to still use the mastery glyph, unfortunately. But we're getting the bare minimum, 40 int. We don't care about mastery skill damage because it's just scaling the firewall and not the proc. And the proc is half our damage. Um, we're using uh, uh, this one here, dealing damage with fire, cold, or lightning to an enemy. Increases all damage dealt to them. 5% for 10 seconds. So we don't actually deal direct cold. That's still... 5% and then another 5%, so that's slightly better than 10% more damage, but it gives you a bonus to the non-physical nodes, which is resists and non-physical damage. So those are really powerful effects. I love Enchantment Master. I think if you're playing Firewall, you are crazy to not use it, and uh, it really helps with the incinerate as well. Um, I have the exploit glyph here. This is just a really efficient setup for dexterity nodes. And we get some fire damage and crit damage there. Um, and there is the new burning instinct. Your burning instinct damage is increased by 10%. It's, an, it's a new, it's a redone node. Uh, this for me is like 38%, by the way, 38% multi. So very, very good because we're scaling crit. We're scaling crit multi and we're doing that through the destruction glyph. Normally the destruction glyph, it, 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 it up all your damage. So it's going to up your damage over time and your direct damage, but you need to crit to get it. So you actually need to do direct damage in order to activate the bonus. Firewall normally doesn't do a lot of that. Like you have the firebolt, you have uh, like teleport, you might, you might crit with teleport or something, but the procs really do help keep this up. And it gives you a lot of crit multi, which again is unconditional damage. It's always active on your firewalls and it's just happening by default when you crit on your procs. So. Diablo 4 is kind of one of those games where it's, you know, if if you're doing this on a Tuesday, you get some extra damage. This is like the ultimate build where, it's just, nah, forget about that. You know, we're just dealing damage. Use the skill, run away, everything dies. It's a super cool build. I'm really happy with it. And uh, I know some of you guys killed Duriel on your first character. You got some of the uh, uniques that I talked about. So maybe it's something you might want to try. And if you do, again, make sure to check out in the link below on Mobilytics for the written guide. Thank you.